Do you struggle knowing how close or how far away to place light from your subject? Today, I will show you how the inverse square law can help you be intentional in your light placement. Hey everybody, I'm Nate Edwards with BYU Photo and today we are gonna talk about the inverse square law of light and why you need to understand it in your photography. I mean, this is something that has completely changed the way I approach lighting. I use the inverse square law all of the time and I love it. And if you don't already understand it, I think you'll love it too after you learn these simple principles. The main thing you need to understand about the inverse square law is this. It's all about light fall off. Now I'll demonstrate what I mean by that, but in essence, it's how fast the light falls off to shadow. Now, I don't fully understand the physics behind it, nor do I think we need to, to be able to use it to our advantage. But I'll help you understand the basics so you can get a general grasp of it, and then I'll show you some examples of practical application. The inverse square law states that the intensity of light is equal to one over the distance squared. Now, if you're anything like me, I really need to see what that means to understand it. For example, here we have our light source and we'll place a mark every 12 inches away from it till we reach 10 feet. Now let's do some math starting at one foot away. The distance is one foot, so one squared is one. And one over one is equal to one or 100%. So one foot away, you get 100% of the light hitting your subject. Now watch what happens when we move two feet away. Two squared is four. One fourth is equal to 25%. We lose 75% of our light just by moving two feet away or doubling the distance. Isn't that crazy? Doubling the distance doesn't cut the intensity of light down in half it cuts it down three quarters. Okay, now let's go three feet away. Three squared is nine, so three feet away you have one ninth of light, or 11%, and so on down until you get to 10 feet away. Now the main thing I want you to notice here is the further away you get from the light source, the lower percentage of light fall off there is. There's not much difference between the 2% of light seven feet away and the 1% of light at 10 feet away. Moral of the story, there is a huge light fall off between one and two feet, but not that much the further away you get from the light source. This is really important to remember. Keep in mind, this is just a general example to help you understand what's happening with the light. When you're close to the light source, the light is very concentrated in a small area, but the further away you move from the light source, the same amount of light is distributed to a much larger area. Now I want to show you why this matters. Let's start with an individual portrait. We have one of our students, Brooklyn, up here. And in this example, the light source is really close to her. So what the inverse square law teaches us is the light will fall off really fast. Look at the difference of intensity of light on the face compared to the feet. Notice how fast the light falls off. The light starts to fall off just below the shoulders and by the time it gets to the feet, there's not much light hitting there. Now let's raise our light source really high and take another photo. And since we're moving the distance of the light further away, we need to increase the power of our light or change the exposure on our camera to compensate for the loss of power in our light. The difference in this example is about three and a half stops. All right, Donovan, just raise that straight up. That's probably good right there. Now I want you to notice the difference in the intensity of light that hits her face compared to her feet. See how they're almost the same this time? That's because the further away we are from the light source, the less percentage of fall off there is in the light, or there's less change in the amount of light that hits the subject. As a side note, something I wanna point out is the hardness and softness of the light. Look at the shadows under the nose. See how when the light is close, the shadows are softer, and when the light is further away, the shadows are harder. One thing to keep in mind is the closer you have the light source to your subject, the softer the light will be. The further away your light source, the harder the light will be. 
With all that we're going over, there is not a right or wrong way. These are just things to be aware of so when you're taking your own photos, you can make conscious and intentional decisions. So just keep in mind, if you want to use the light to just focus on a person's face, move the light really close and let the light fall off fast. If you want the same intensity of light on the face and the rest of the body, move the light further away. Now you may be wondering why the background changed in brightness as I was showing you these examples. That's also because of the inverse square law. I'm going to use a different light to illustrate this better, and it's a trick I use all of the time to get a different value or brightness out of my backdrop. In this first example, we will only move the light and not the model. So we started with putting the light really close, and what does the inverse square law teach us about fall off when our subject is close to the light source? It happens really fast. So this example, our background should be relatively dark because there's much more light hitting the model than the background. Now, you guys know this isn't technically true, but you guys understand what I'm saying. It's the same amount of light hitting the background, but it's dispersed to a much larger area, so the intensity of light is much less. Let's take the photo and see. Now we'll move the light a little further away. And remember to increase the power of your light or change the exposure on your camera to compensate for the change in the amount of light that will hit your model. The difference in this example is about three stops. And knowing what we know about the inverse square law, what will happen to our background? The difference in the amount of light that hits our model and the background will be significantly less. Now see how that lightens our background? Now we'll take a few more photos, but this time we'll move the light and the model together and just change their distance to the background and see what happens. So first we'll start close up to the backdrop. And then we'll move a little bit further back. And then a little bit further back. Now as we look at these photos, see how the closer we are to the backdrop, the lighter it is, and how it gets darker the further away we move from it. The power of the light didn't change, only our distance changed. You can use these tricks to get any shade from light to dark in your background that you want just by knowing how the inverse square law works. Now I want to show you how this applies to taking group photos. With portraits, I love having the light as close as possible because of the look I get with the light fall off. But if you approach group photos the same way, you'll run into a big problem. Here we have two of our students, Brooklyn and Joey, and they're gonna stand in representing a group of people. And I wanna show you what happens when you place the light too close. Now see how Brooklyn is perfectly lit and Joey on the other side is left in the dark. Now they're not evenly lit and you end up with an unusable photo. Now remember what the inverse square law teaches us. The further away the subject is from the light source, the less percentage or difference of fall off there is in the light, or there is less change in the amount of light that hits the subject. So let's move the light further away and take another photo. Again, don't forget to increase the power of your light or change the exposure of your camera as you do to compensate. So this is about three stops. See how the group is more evenly lit all the way across? With large or small groups, I try to use a smaller light source and move it further away as opposed to an individual portrait when I like to use a larger light source and move it really close. It's all about understanding light fall off and knowing when and where to use it. I hope this video has been helpful to you as I explained the basics of the inverse square law and how you can directly apply its principles in your photography. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or feel free to email us at photo at byu.edu.